All right, we're back and got some great topics. And of course, today, uh, d definitely if you're Steve Burton out there, uh, NHL is what's looming uh, next uh, couple hours here, next day, who knows? Uh, potentially there could be an NHL deal, but uh, we know one thing for sure. You got Sidney Crosby coming into this meeting. You have owners coming into this meeting, minus Donald Fair, the NHLPA executive director, and Gary Bettman, the commissioner, and of course, Bill Daly, his sidekick. So guys, who wins this battle? Is it the owners or players without no Bettman and no Fair? Well, I, my, my opinion is, is uh... Uh, the players without fair hurt worse because that's that's their business guy. That's the guy with the background. Uh, a lot of these guys came straight out of high school, have played great hockey, and you know haven't dealt with a lot of this stuff. You know maybe they've been privy to it a little bit. Certain certain number of the guys, whereas the owners are most of the owners are coming from a, a lifetime of, of business, a background of understanding uh, the ins and outs, the economics and money, and I, I just think it puts the players at a disadvantage. But, you know, they might have a guy like, you know, George Peros or Kevin Westgarth, guys who went to Harvard and studied all that stuff. If they go into that meeting, it's a good thing. I think it's good for both sides because at the end of the day, it's the owners and players that are pretty much making the money for the NHL, not Fear or Gary Bettman, who's just sitting aside and making, what is it, $7 million a year doing nothing. So I think uh, if the owners and players can get down to a deal, I think they could do it a whole lot better than Fear and... Uh, Batman, so we'll see what happens. And you know what? It might be more of a relaxed atmosphere where they could hammer things down because I think the advantage goes to the owners because you don't want to see the middleman. You want to deal directly with your employees. And I think in this case, that's what you're going to see with those two. Uh, will we actually see a deal get done? Uh, and, and I want to get to that topic because uh, Steve Burton, who works for uh, CBS in Boston, uh, said that uh, he has sources within the, the Boston team or his NHL sources out there um, that in the next uh, couple hours or even the next day, uh, we will see an NHL deal get done. Um, do you guys see this cautiously, optimistically? What do you guys it's make of this? pretty uh, bold statement to make, but uh, let's hope that he's right because I'd love to see hockey get going. But yeah. uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You got an owner, Pittsburgh's owner, I forget what his name is, but uh, he pretty much brought uh, Pittsburgh Penguins new arena. He's a businessman. He likes making deals. So hopefully the guy from CBS Boston knows a little more than us. And we can yeah, get this well, we'd deal. love to see it get going again. I mean, and it's, it's, I, I just think it's hard for everybody to, to look at billion, billionaire owners and millionaire players and, and feel sorry for anybody in this thing. Like, you know, get her going. Let's, let's get back at it. Maybe the fans are the ones who are really hurting this whole thing. But like you said, uh, let's get hockey in there. Uh, if not, I guess it'll be good news for uh, one group, Hockey Canada. As the World Juniors are approaching, uh, they'll be in Russia starting on Boxing Day. Of course, the players were announced. If healthy, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, number one guy, number one center. Oh, absolutely. I think he'll play even if he's a little bit better. Even if he's got a broken leg, you keep him for the fourth line. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the lockout year, yeah. yeah. No, I think even if he has a sore shoulder or whatever it is, I think he'll, he'll play. He has to. It's World Juniors. Everyone wants to play for Canada at the World Juniors. And even though the, the Oilers might be a little cautious uh, right now, because he is one of their prized possessions, I'm sure it wouldn't uh, hurt uh, Team Canada or at least uh, some of the guys, his teammates, to say, just go. I'm sure because Everly's been there twice. You have same thing with Hall. Mm -hmm. They've had great experiences winning a gold medal. I'm sure... Uh, they kind of want uh, their other boy to do so. Yeah, and the Nuge hasn't been hasn't played for Canada, which was a shame, really. Well, and, and if to get some more winning, uh, being in that winning environment isn't going to hurt the Oilers. Yeah, and you know what though, I want to ask you guys because it, last time we had a lockout in a full season, uh, Canada fielded one of the most <laughs> dominant teams in World Junior history. Could we see a direct relation to that this time around? They're going to be a good team. They won't be as good as the 05 team because that team was sick. That was yeah. unreal. They're kind of in the same situation, you know, because they had Jeff Glass as the goaltender. Now that's kind of, I think it's Malcolm Subban is going to be taking the reins as the Which number one. Which has been a while that they've had a number one guy. And, and he's not really putting up the greatest numbers in the OHL right now, but uh, the team's going to be good regardless. Oh, yeah. They're going to be loaded up front. They got a lot of D-men returning. Uh, Ryan Murray, it's unfortunate he won't be playing, but uh, they're going to be a pretty good team. Yeah, pretty loaded. I agree. All right, uh, you know what? Uh, we've had this happen to the Windsor Spitfires. Uh, now the Portland Winterhawks uh, most recently violated player benefit rules, uh, paying flights for families uh, to watch games in Portland and paying their captains 
cell phone bill for the last three seasons. <laughs> <laughs> it seems Half of the team it had seems, text messages. <laughs> it seems ridiculous. It depends how many messages he's been sending. Uh, but no, it, it seems a little ri ridiculous and severe, but the WHL fined Portland $200,000. Not only that, but they lose nine Bantam picks, including the next five first rounders. Too excessive, or is this the right amount of punishment for Portland? I think, I think the thing that, you know, if you talk to numerous people, the biggest thing is, is it's not like Portland's the only team doing it, right? Where the rest of the teams are going, come on, guys, right? And I mean, you, you hear enough that there's enough going on with a lot of different teams. And so they're making a statement with Portland. Does that make everybody stop or just uh, pick and choose how they do it a little, little tighter? And so if you, if you look at it from that viewpoint, it's pretty excessive because you're, you're punishing a team nine draft picks when you could probably just went with the fine and the suspension. And the rest of the teams are still getting away with it and they're still getting the draft picks. So it's a... You know, it's tough. Now yeah, you've the, heard him competitively the for The GM a long and time. coach, yeah, you mentioned, um, Mike Johnston, is uh, gone for the year. Yep. He's suspended for the entire season. But that, it seems a little too much yeah. getting rid of those picks because you're getting rid of their future, yeah. which they shouldn't be punishing. They should be punishing their past and maybe their present a little bit. Yeah, right? I was just going to say that too. Just keep your eye on the Portland Winterhawks because after this season, it could be all downhill because they're going to they're gonna lose Seth Jones for sure. Yep. They're going to lose, I think, Ty Ratty's on that team. Like They've got yep. a lot of good upfront loaded power. Um, especially losing five first round picks, I can see them being in last place for a very long time and potentially lose that franchise. That, uh, that would be very disappointing, especially with the money they've pumped into that franchise recently, going to the Memorial Cup and such. All right, uh, quickly, uh, the San Antonio Spurs head coach Greg Popovich sat out four of his big names, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Manny Ginobili, and um, a minute eater man. Uh, this guy plays a lot, uh, Danny Green. Uh, it was a televised game against Miami, there's David's, two games that night. Yeah, That's exactly. the part that bugs me. And, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> exactly. And this is a primetime game, and he sat out his players. Fined $250,000 by David Stern in the NBA, because obviously he's looking for... What was he, why, why did he sit him out, though? Was it just They were too tired. Because they were, the, it was the schedule. They played four games in five nights. They were on the road. He said, you know what, I'll send my boys to San Antonio so when we play Memphis, they'll be rested up. And you know what, they ended up winning that game in Mem uh, against Memphis, too. And I have a hard I'm time just saying, with that. Here, th but this is the issue. If this was the Charlotte Bobcats, if this was the Milwaukee Bucks, is that any concern for the NBA? But I think it's just because it was the Miami Heat that was a big thing. And mind you, I'll let you guys know, the Heat only won by five points. Yeah. So should David Stern come hard on Greg Popovich and the Spurs? I don't think that they're. I, I don't think it is any of the league's business, because in the end, that team, that coach should have the leeway to play how he wants. I mean, so what you're saying is, is if we get three games left in the season, we've locked up first place. And I'm going to rest a couple of my key guys. They've had maybe a little bit of a nagging injury. Now I'm going to get fined. That's for yeah. I thought it was a little unnecessary. Yeah, they're just they were what New York the one night. Now they had to go to Miami to wrap up their six game road trip back to back nights. I see no problem sending your four guys home. Like you said, they only lost by five points. So does that mean San Antonio is that good? Or uh, hey, you know hey if the bad. coach wants to sit them for ten games and they go zero and ten. I mean, it is what it is. In the end, you got to understand as a league that these guys are all out there to win championships and everything, and that's going to push your league forward. And if there's a game where they don't show up because you arrest them, does a league know if there's been a nagging injury for Parker? Maybe Parker's uh, ankle. I'll say this, though. Greg you know? Popovich is a funny guy. He likes to kind of say, uh, stick the proverbial middle finger to the NBA. Of course, remember last year, he uh, sat out, uh, who was it? I believe it was Tim Duncan, was Duncan by yeah. saying, uh, you know, we'll say in the injury report, knees, whatever. He said old. So yeah, that's the type of guy he Old is. Niece? And you know what? I could understand. You guys are absolutely right. But we know what? We're going to take uh, another quick commercial break. We'll be back with Over Under next.